The mathematics of the market are eternal. Complex and mysterious as the stock market may seem, its returns are determined by the elementary internet interaction of just two simple elements, albeit two elements whose qualities are different as night from day. The first is investment return, determined by dividend yields and earnings growth. Investment return tends to be recurrent and steady. The second is speculative return, reflected simply in the change in the price earnings multiple, price that investors willing to pay for a dollar of earnings. Speculative return is intermittent and spasmodic. Add them together, we have the market return. It's that simple, it really is. And over time, it is earnings and dividends, investment return, that determine all of the return that is achieved by the stock market. Consider the past 40 years. Dividend yields plus earnings growth over that period came to a total of 11.2%. The actual return of the stock market was an identical 11.2% per year. In the long run, as it turns out, earnings and dividends call the market tune. But speculative return can be the driving force over short term and even over extended periods. For example, in 1961-81, the first half of that 40-year period, the P.E. fell from 22 to 8 times, resulting in a speculative return of minus 4% per year, 4.5% a year, reducing the investment return of 12% then to a market return of 7.5, 12 minus 4.5. During the second half of the period, 1981 to yesterday, the period in which most Americans have gained their investment experience, the P.E. ratio soared to as high as 33 before retreating to the present level of 24, still enough to add five percentage points a year in speculative return, raising the annual investment return to a market return of 15%. Now think about what I've just told you. Despite the all-time market returns, high market returns we reveled in in the past 20 years, the fundamentals of earnings and dividends were actually a bit lower than in the previous 20-year period, 10% versus 12. But the annual report market return more than doubled from 7 to 15. Why? Simply because the pendulum of market speculation, which pulled returns down as it swung from the grand ebullience of 1961 to the pessimism of 81, sent returns soaring as it swung back to the roaring optimism that culminated just as we celebrated the new millennium, a year early, I should note. And what a difference it made. Consider the magic of compounding on an investment return over each of those two 20-year periods. The 1961 investor earned 7.5% and enjoyed $32,000 profit at the end of the period. The 1981 investor earned 15%, a $140,000 profit by March 2001. That remarkable increase from $32,000 to $140,000 came not from higher corporate profits or dividends, not at all. Actually, they were lower, but solely because of a change in investor attitudes. The point is that the economics of market return, the earnings and dividends of Americans' corporations over two centuries have always been both predictable, almost always, and productive. The emotions of market return, on the other hand, the price that investors will be willing to pay for each dollar of earnings, are unpredictable, sometimes productive, sometimes remarkably counterproductive. I use this dramatic example of the two forces that determine stock returns. I call it the oasis of investment versus the mirage of speculation, a mirage that's fading as we speak today, to look ahead and consider what we might find in the coming decade. We begin with a yield, dividend yield of only 1%, a fraction of the historical norm of 4%. To put it bluntly, that is not a lot of gas in the stock market's tank. But if we assume that corporate earnings growth will continue at 7% annual rate, historic, stocks would enjoy an investment return, investment return of 8% annually during the coming decade. Will speculative return enhance or reduce that figure? That's the question before the House. If investors continue to pay 24 times earnings as they do today, that market return will be the self-same 8% per year. That's what the market holds for us. If the P.E. goes to 18 times, drops, that would result in a negative speculation return, speculative of minus 3%, bringing that 8% down to just 5%. If, on the other hand, the P.E. were to rise to 30, we'd have a positive speculative return of 2%, bringing the market's return to 10%. I think the current P.E. of 24 cannot be sustained. I think it's more likely to go down than go up. And therefore, I believe that 5% is a much better guess than 10% as the future market return. Warren Buffett, by the way, used a very similar 
different, different, I should say, but equally disciplined methodology, and he comes up with an estimated return in that range, 5 6 percent. You'll have to decide how much comfort you want to take from the fact that Bogle and Buffett agree. I wouldn't take too much from it. Maybe we'll be wrong on the low side. What, you might ask, would it take to produce another 15 percent return in the coming decade? It's easy. Assuming the investment return is 8 percent, it would require a speculative return, if you're sitting down, of 7 percent. That is, it would require a final P.E. ratio of 47 times earnings. To be clear, I don't think that number is remotely in the cards. In short, we have now departed a two-decade-long golden era for equity investors in which we literally never had it so good and are entering an era in which the party is over.